Hello Vime community, I'm back to do a recent Vime Finds video and my uh, videos are keeping on freezing all the time, so uh, let's see if this works this time. Uh, I'm back to do a recent Vime Finds video and, and this is, is all psych prog and, and uh, a little bit of the standard rock, so my jazz uh, is going to be in another update. Um, playing in the background is July. I bought the reissue from 2014, the record store day release on Splatter yellow vinyl, uh, very psychedelic. Uh, and as some of you know, I owned uh, I, I owned our uh, original press on major minor of, of July back in the day and I actually sold it. So it's nice to have the, the reissue now to, to remember that I actually owned a, a holy grail, a, a real holy grail. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to start with uh, the kind of reissues and then the early pressings and then the grail, the original pressings of grails uh, in last. Because there's a, some some grails in here. In my book, it's it's in it's grail material at least. Uh, so talking about grail, this is James Lust to the party, and you can find this for five euro or something like that. Get it? It's been reissued. Uh, and this is actually the only James last year record that you you need to to uh, check check out. The rest of them should burn, and there are a lot of, of records by James Lust, so it's going to be a, a hell of a fire. Uh, but I got that for free, so uh, so yeah, it's it's actually going into my psych collection. Yeah, um, the Doors, Strange Days, 1968. I didn't have this. The only one, the only the, the, the only Doors record I didn't have uh, was this one. So now I have it. This is a 1991 reissue, and it sounds kind of crap. So I'm gonna hunt for another one, but I paid like two euros for it. Uh, it includes one of my favorite Doors tracks uh, when the music's over, 11 minutes long. Uh, this reissue, I'm glad I, I got it. Brötzel uh, Machine from '71. Uh, it's a German Kraut record on Pilz, Pilz, Pilz uh, originally, but uh, now reissued 2008 or something like that. Sounds pretty good. The music is fantastic. It's it's more folk rock than traditional Kraut in my opinion, but it's from German and the time period, so I guess it's quite Kraut. Check it out. Classic in the psych kind of psych department. Also, 1971, a, a Danish group released Green Man, their second release on Philips. This is Ake or Ake, Ake, A H. I have no idea how they pronounce their band name, but that's how it looks like. Um, 2018, they released this reissue on green vinyl. Obviously, obviously green vinyl. Um, a little bit more prog than psych, uh, a little bit more on the symphonic side, but I don't, I don't, I mean, I, this is not, this is more, this is prog, prog rock, just good old prog rock, not symphonic prog, because I don't like symphonic prog. Uh, this is one that I wanted for so long, I wanted a, a, a original press of this, everyone wants an original press of everything, but, <laughs> you know, um, uh, but it's hard to get and it's expensive. So uh, even the reissues now on Finders Keepers are getting really expensive. The first one was released in 2008, I think, and this one is from 2013, the latest reissue, and it's getting pricey, but it's fantastic. I mean, people are buying this when it gets out. Uh, Zelda is, uh, this is a Turkish kind of folk psych record uh, because she's a folk singer. And she has her folk voice over folk songs, but in the background there's a, a psych band that I can't remember the now, na name of now. But they lay sort of the carpet, the psychedelic carpet for her to ride on. Uh, and it's a marriage made in heaven. It's, it's so damn good. Very Middle Eastern, I mean, um, world musically. But, but I mean, the, the psych in the bottom of the folk Turkish folk music is just to die for. Fantastic. Okay, so sad story. She isn't getting any money for the reissues if uh, her information is correct. There's, if you Google this, uh, there's an interview, pretty recent interview, because she's alive today with her and uh, she's ripped off by Finders Keepers Records, unfortunately. 
Mos Def had uh, sampled this and had a hit and won a Grammy and I think he owned the rights and to the music and I mean it's just a uh, uh, doesn't sound any good, but but it's she isn't getting any money for it, so that's really a, uh, a shame. Okay, seven, 75, let's say 1975. Yeah, 75. Uh, this was uh, issued now. Tom Waits, one of the few Tom Waits records that I need that I didn't have that I know own Nighthawks at the, the diner, not in the best condition, but it's not the uh, cover wise, but the, the, the vinyl is in, in good shape. Um, but it's not the best Tom Waits record. I'm not a completist, but I, I really like to own the, the earliest stuff by him. And then, I mean, everything is great. I mean, Real Gone, Alice, uh, Bone Machine, uh, Mule Variation, uh, and uh, Bastards, uh, Ballers, and, and Ballers records, uh, Orphans records, it's just fantastic. So uh, nice addition to the, to the Waits kind of catalog. Okay, moving on. Uh, 19, let's say 69, 70, maybe 70, but this was reissued in 1990. One of the worst covers to one of the best covers ever, but Beggars Can't Be Choosers, right? This is A Time Before This by Julian's Treatment. This was issued, I think it's UK band, uh, maybe German, no, UK. Fuck, I should do my research better than this, but um, they released a... Uh, uh, double LP with this music on Youngblood and it's really expensive today to buy and this is a 1990 reissue I think it's a rip of the CD but it sounds okay they cramped in two LPs on one LP set um, to me it reminds me a little bit of, of the best moments of Pink Floyd's 70s material like Dark Side of the Moon and stuff like that her voice is fantastic um, really really a, a gem and I I desperately need an earlier press of this. Are you uh, 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 not not necessarily the Youngblood uh, press, but but uh, earlier press at least, and something that sounds as good as it can, because it's a fantastic record. If not a ten, it's a eight nine. Uh, yeah, and talk about, I mean, classic tens is Aardvark, uh, the UK band from 1970, I think this was uh, issued on DRAM Records uh, originally. Look at that artwork, it's fantastic. This is, is a reissue from like some time, let's say 2008 on everything, uh, on Tapestry Records, so limited to, to 500 copies. But I was, I was fortunate to, to find this for a great price um, and it sounds great, so I'm pretty happy. Uh, Guess I have to 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 uh, have that uh, until I find a, a original copy. Yeah, right. I actually bought this six months ago, and I haven't really sunk my teeth into it. And I need to do that because it's it's fantastic music. But this is like some sort of introduction to to Alexis Corner bootleg him. So I, I bought this for a great price. Um, and here's stories about people. I mean, Keith Richards is hailing him. And I read uh, on the back side, the people playing on this this record, just to name a few, uh, Ginger Baker, Jack Bruce, Charlie Watts, Graham Bond, uh, Dave Holland, Alan Skidmore, um, Terry Cox, Lol uh, Cox Hill, uh, John Marshall, and the list goes on and on. Uh, I mean, the who's who of, of uh, the blues and jazz scene in England uh, in the 60s. So he's the inventor of white jazz, uh, no white, white jazz, white uh, blues. Uh, and uh, they are saying that without him, they, we wouldn't have the cream or uh, stones or Beatles and you know, stuff like that. Uh, so we have a lot to thank Alex's Corner for. So I'm gonna sink my teeth in this one day. This is a German first press of this, released 1969, I think, um, on Metronome Records, and I love Metronome Records. They had some years uh, where they released fantastic material. The Smoke, to name one. Great. 19, let's say 75. 
is this this was uh, issued uh, this is faust tapes their third fourth release something like that and it's just what it is this is i read let's read here this is the music on this album drawn from faust's own uh, library of private tapes it was recorded informally and not originally intended for release however since british interest in the group has been uh, unusually great it has been decided to make this an official uh, this unofficial material available for the public i think they took like two pounds to buy this so everyone owns a copy of this like the entire mankind owns a, a copy of this because everyone could afford this in the record shop uh, released on on virgin records this is the first uk uh, press but i don't like the music i really don't i don't get faust i can't get into faust so i'm gonna sell this or trade it or whatever to someone who needs it it's in great shape uh, i only keep the first Faust record that I own because it's a great cover artwork. I mean, it's a classic cover artwork with the, the X-rayed hand. But other than that, I don't like the music. I never, I never play the music. So, so why do I buy the record? I don't know. I'm stupid. Okay, Edgar Bruton Band. And this was on my One Piece for uh, forever. Um, also like a heavy, heavy psych or heavy prog classic record that everyone that collects those things needs to own this uh, great record of the this power trio Edgar Bruton band uh, on uh, Harvester this is a third press or something like this uh, I think it was originally released 1969 and this reissue is from 72 glad to own it now uh, I've been wanting it for forever it seems like all other records I buy. Uh, yeah, this is this is awesome. 1968. I mean, talk about weird stuff. How could this guy get to record an, an album on Electra in 1968? I mean, there was they, they didn't lack good artists back in the day. Uh, this is fantastic, but it's unsellable. I mean, it's it's so schizophrenic. It's it's scary. Uh, David Stoughton, uh, Transformer. Some of these are like on, almost folk ballady, and some of them are extremely experimental. As I said, uh, a very very uh, schizophrenic record, and I love it. It's awesome. Every Psych fan should own this uh, and get a copy of uh, of this. It's not super expensive, and but it's not uh, popping up that that often. Uh, sample it online and then get it. <clears throat> Twelve minutes, pretty good on time. Um, magic. I got this not to like five euro something like that uh on rare earth i i nowadays i actually sample rare earth label uh records before i i get them if except if they're not cost like one or two euro i i take a chance on it but if if i've learned something about the rare earth label it's like it's a hit and miss much i, I mean the majority of records from the rare earth label is shit like really really bad and uh, i guess that i mean motown did this sort of sub label rare earth to try to sell to our uh, mostly white audience but they still wanted they, they wanted rocky sound but they they wanted the soul too so they wanted to eat the cake and also keep it uh, and i think that in some cases with some of these bands you can really hear that the the product that they released is not what they really want to play like Matrix, for the, it's a band on, on the Rare Earth label called Matrix. It sucks. It's really, really and funny, funny darlings of funny. I can't remember even what it's called. This is kind of good. This is one of those like Rare Earth uh, releases that is is it's kind of good. Half of this material is, is pretty good. Uh, half of it's just standard, boring rock. But then again, you have some crazy ass, fantastic um, uh, releases like How the Good. It's almost a 10. Every single track on that one is great. And you have the, the songwriter on Motown uh, called Ardeen Stanton or or, or S. Dean or something like that. Thomas, I can't remember, but it's it's a record you can find anywhere, all, uh, sometimes even sealed for one euro. 
and it's a masterpiece. Uh, there's a track called um, Gotta See Jane, which is a masterpiece in my opinion. So that's my two cents on the Rare Earth label. Moving on to Brain. Uh, now we get into the, the heavy stuff. This is Noise 75 and talk about Masterpiece. I've wanted this for so long. This is the first and only record I own now by new uh, Noise, but but uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep on hunting for, for more uh, Noise records. Second or third German press on, on Brain. Originally released on the, on the lavish sort of green and beautiful green uh, brain label uh, so uh, so so yeah masterpiece I, I i mean it's it's a 10 this this is a 10 it's beautiful amb ambient drony uh, craft worky electronic uh, a, a per in my opinion a perfect perfect crowd rock record and and in in my opinion if you want to if anyone asks Show me a crowd rock, one crowd rock record that sounds like crowd rock. I will, I will play them this. Uh, okay, so this is the moment we all been waiting for. This is the, the cream of the crap. This is the record. If you want to take one record with you uh, from this video, it's this one. If you should sample and listen to one song or one record that I showed through the entire video, it's this one. Uh, this is a uh, obscure ass record called Magnus and Johan. Uh, the two artists from Iceland uh, released this in 1971. So there they are. On uh, almost like a, it's not a private press. They released some some uh, some stuff on, on on this label, but uh, not much on Iceland. This is Scorpion. So what this is is. Uh, masterpiece of folk pop psych um, i compare this to uh, let's see here it's called richard twice i've shown the richard twice record before great great voice very fragile voice with with uh, um, an awesome sort of of uh, tender production and and uh, orchestration this sounds like a blend between that and Bee Gees early materials with the harmonies, you know, the Bee Gees early harmonies um, and orchest orchestration. But there's some Hammond organ playing uh, that reminds me of the really darkest moments of the Tom Waits catalog. You know, that sort of almost, you can almost taste the, the foulness of the music, you know. Um, this is fantastic. The first side, the first song is called Mary Jane. Check that out. It's on YouTube. Um, if you don't like that, it's not your record. But but uh, if you want to continue on the second side, there's not a bad song. The Rape of Lady Justice and Times With You. Masterpiece. This this is not a 10. It's maybe an 8 because there's maybe two two songs that is not that good. Like Masterpiece is good, but the rest of it is just like mind-blowing and I guess you can find this pretty cheap because people don't know about this but it's labeled on Discogs as a 70 euro kind of record and I bought it for for uh, let's say less, less than that a lot less than that uh, okay moving on <clears throat> staying in, in Germany or going back to Germany uh, I got a uh, Copy of Popol Vus, uh, let's see here, Selingpressung. I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. Uh, looks like that. Uh, and this is a pretty weird, weird press because the, um, because the cover is, or everything is indicated that it's a, a 1981 press of this 1974 or 4 record, 4, 74. Uh, but the label is on the or uh, uh, label, uh, but also on the PDU, maybe PUD. Uh, so uh, this is this is not on Discogs. So I have no idea what this pressing is from, but I, my guess is late 70s uh, because of the or uh, or very early uh, 80s, but late 70s I think. Excuse me, two seconds. Uh, 
Um, and this, I mean, talk about masterpiece. This is great, great ambient, typical purple wool when they are at their peak, their best. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a soundtrack to, to a very good life. Uh, staying in, in Germany, uh, a lot of German records now for some re strange reason, but uh, I'm super glad to, to add this to the collection. This is uh, Guru Guru's Kangaroo or Kengu, Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, this inside and this on the back side. And this sounds just like the cover artwork. I mean, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's. Uh, Sounds just like that. Second, uh, second German press on uh, green brain label. Uh, and it's fantastic. Really, really good. Uh, it's very drone. It reminds me of, of Can, actually, uh, when you play the first side at least. So it reminds you of, of Can's Tagomago or, Strain, uh, or Future Days or something like that. And it was tight. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, yeah, iconic crowd rock record. Glad to add it to my collection. Um, a guy I think is watching my videos uh, that I traded with is more into to jazz now, and I'm more into. Uh, and he has a lot of, of psych, and I'm more into psych now, and I have a lot of jazz. So it's like the perfect uh, kind of match for for trading records with each other. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so. Three more to go, and now we are on, on grail territory, in my opinion here, um, at least uh, when it comes to rarity and, and uh, stuff that I wanted for, for a long time and, and so forth. Uh, this has been on my want list for maybe three years or something like that, since the first time I heard the song Murder of Maria Martin. Uh, this is Shirley Collins and the Albion Country Band. So, in 1969, I think... It is 1969. Shirley Collins went into the studio to record this folk uh, folk record, but in in England and in popped uh, every time you know they started to record in popped the most insane musicians and they asked them to join. So that's why they got this list of like a big band folk uh, band in the background. Uh, so you have everyone on this record playing. Uh, I mean, it's the entire 1969 lineup of uh, Fairport Convention uh, with Richard Thompson in the in the foreground. I think he's on all but one song on uh, on this. This is the first UK press on Pegasus. Um, man, oh man, I'm glad I, I own this now. The, the song I said. Um, Murder of Maria Martin, check it out. It's a folk rock masterpiece. Uh, it's one of those songs to die for. It should be in, in every single best of list of the best songs ever recorded. It's a coloss of a, a folk tune. So glad to own that to the collection. <clears throat> um, two more to go. What? Don't you own this already, Jonas? Tusilaga van Fara by Anna Själv Tredje, the 1977 masterpiece, ambient masterpiece uh, released on Swedish Silence Records in uh, like that very flimsy, flimsy cover. Uh, yeah, don't you own this already? Yes, I did. Uh, but I, I traded it with a ger German guy to get a first press of the let's see here. I think I have it. This Ashra Temple. So I traded this for this uh, first press on uh, or uh, because I knew that I could get this Swedish record uh, pretty easily uh, another day. And I think not not even a year has gone by and and I uh, I could uh, could buy a copy uh, for a great price. Or I traded it, I think. Fuck it. Uh, so so yeah, I'm a lucky owner of this now uh, again. Uh, I mean, yeah, people say masterpiece. I think that I mean the Astra Temple is in the same vein as this record, kind of ambient kraut rock. 
Uh, and I think that that is a, a better record. That's a masterpiece. This is maybe a seven or an eight in my book, but uh, it's very rare and it's hard to, to, to find, but I knew that I could uh, secure a copy uh, again. So yeah, the last one, and thank you so much, uh, Nico, for this one. I actually got this uh, for a great price on an uh, auction that he held on his Facebook page. Uh, so now I'm a proud owner of Aunt Mary, the Norwegian uh, kind of uh, psych and, and prog band. Uh, as you can see, not in the best condition, and therefore the, the price that I paid for it, uh, along with uh, uh, a vinyl copy in the same kind of uh, quality. I, I uh, gave it a good wash in my in my uh, washing machine uh, and it sounds it sounds pretty good but in the in quieter parts it's crackles and pops but uh, I'm very very glad that I own a copy um, at all uh, of this and for the price I, I paid it I'm, I'm super glad so thank you so much. Uh, for, for this, hooking me on to that, you seem to be, um, uh, Nico seems to be the, the, um, the Aunt Mary kind of curator in the world. Uh, you seem to own every single copy there has ever been pressing wise and multiple copies that you uh, distribute out to uh, great people in the world. So we thank you for that. Yeah, 26 minutes. I'm sorry, guys, but a lot of, of, of uh, records as you saw. So uh, please give me a comment if you have any, and I'll talk to you soon.